All right, so today is gonna to be pretty brief and slightly specific. Um, there's many different types to, there's many different types of enclosures, ported, sealed. We're not really gonna discuss that very much. We're gonna look at the materials and the methods more so. Um, today I'm using three quarter inch birch plywood. Uh, the material options are pretty much the common would be MDF medium density fiber board or particle board, ranger board, whatever you want to call it, that's another option. I personally like plywood better, it's similar properties. But anyways, um, there's different ways to fasten it together. There's nails, there's staples, there's screws, there's just glue, there's uh, dado biscuits, uh, is that the right term? There's multiple different ways to do it. But today we're doing the plywood, with the screw and glue. So countersinking the countersink bit and then inch and a quarter zinc plated wood screws flat top. And some background information. We're putting, we're building a box for this Rockford Fosgate 12 inch slim. So T1 slim. 600 watts RMS, same excursion spec as the full, full depth 12 inch in the T1. Um, it's going in my 2002 Duramax. But to get here, I'm gonna go ahead. So I definitely skipped a few steps in this one. For the video by that, I mean, not skipping any steps in real life. So use my table saw and my skill saw. Table saw is right there, skill saw is right there. To build the, to cut out all of our pieces. Today's dimensions are, just, just, just so I can humor you, 22 by 19 and the total box height will be just under seven inches. Then we're gonna place the sub near the front of the enclosure. So, because I have a sloped back seat, so the sub can not conflict with the seat. Um, where am I gonna start? So basically, I built these before without these clamps. They're just handy for holding it in place while you do the screw. I generally build the whole box dry drill all my holes, then I glue it together. But with proper joinery, it's very flush. I do like to leave a little bit extra, like when it's this type of joint, I leave a little bit here, and then we can flush trim it up later, and that's one of the tricks I'm gonna wanna show you later. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this process and catch up with you. I guess I can tell you a little bit about this. So this is gonna be the bottom. I put the main screws in all the locations and that's all I need for the dry fit at the time being. But now I'm gonna draw the rest of my countersinks and I just eyeball this in, especially if it's the bottom. If this was a really showy build, I'd use a tape measure. But for this, I'm just gonna eyeball. So I'll do a couple here on camera. That's what the countersink bit looks like. This, this basically prevent, you can use this in MDF too, one of these. Um, basically, you can adjust how, how deep the countersink is and how deep that is as well. And you just uh, drill the hole. This prevents the plywood or the MDF from splitting when you put a screw into it. Just for sakes, I will put a screw in. Impact number two, Robbie, just easy as that. Now I'm gonna drill the rest of my holes and then we'll look at the baffle. All right, so now let's look at the, building the baffle. So this sub, as I said before, I'm gonna be putting it closer, sorry for the bump there on the camera, putting it closer to the front. That's the whole concept of this. And I'm gonna space it off of the edge of the box about a quarter inch. So basically, uh, I'm gonna take this trim ring off and then trace it and we'll go from there. So I traced out the trim ring, the outside the trim ring, just to give a physical placement. Now we need to mark, I already marked, sorry, the center of our cutout for our woofer. So let me just go over the manual here. We go the easy one, mounting diameter in inches, 
12 inch is 11.22. So we're gonna call that um, 11 and a quarter. Now pretty much the easiest way to go about this if you don't have the correct tool, which I still haven't purchased, it's a big scrap of wood similar to this. It doesn't have to be that big, maybe a paint stick. Just like that. Half of 11 and a quarter is our radius. So we just take our tape measure. Half 11 and a quarter. Okay, kids, let's do some math. Five and a half plus an eighth. So what would that be? Five and five eighths. Mark that guy right here. And we drill ourselves. Oh. Might have to drill a bigger hole here. Now I just stuck a pen in there. Could be any writing utensil. You can stick it in many different ways. I never, I did not double check distance here, but I'm gonna wing it. So double check, it should be just slightly under hopefully just slightly under 11 and quarter starting at 10 going to 21 and that's 21 and 3 8 so basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this out and uh, cut the blue line because we need to be slightly bigger as I measured I'm going to cut the blue line and uh, she'll be perfect Look at that, very little play. But of course, most subs have a decent area where they will seal. And uh, well, that's that. All right, now it's time to show you guys where the box is going, and they're one of the reasons why we build it, test fit it before we put glue in it. This is to do a complete dry screw and glue, how I like to, because then you know it fits. It's the old setup, two aids, new box should come out to about here. Very similar, simple. Move that guy out of the way. This guy, right on in. Well, that was anticlimactic. And that's the box tucked all the way back, which is the position I'd like to keep it in. And I'm okay with it sticking out this much. I'm just gonna have to do it. It's a performance woofer, it needs the airspace. Anyways, we're talking about the box here. Another thing we can do that will help with this is because we're not super concerned about the airspace it doesn't have to be perfect it just has to be very close to the optimal spec within range close to the optimal spec is what we're going for here um, basically I believe I have the correct router bit that I can sink this down a quarter inch to give me a little bit more room over there and then if that doesn't work then we can actually disassemble this before we go to glue it and we can take like an eighth off of here an eighth off of here and it won't screw anything up too much because those uh, countersink holes I drilled are about that long right there we take just a little bit off they'll pretty much be lined up exactly the same it's not going to be different not even a saw blades width off either side we'll shrink this box a little bit it'll be a slightly less smaller than optimum which is fine but I'm gonna see about this first. That I wanted. Might have to pick one up if this doesn't get us enough clearance. 
That's an easy one to do, even if the box is completely finished. Anyways, so I trimmed both on a saw blades width. It was about a quarter inch more, quarter inch less, a little bit less airspace, but we're still within the approved range. For sure, I'm not even gonna cut, cut the numbers. Maybe I might throw a bit of polyfall in this box too, just a smidge. But anyways, now I'm confident enough that I'm going to glue this guy together. So the next part of this is kind of just expressing tips and tricks. Now that the glue is set up for an hour, it's time before, a while ago, I used to just sand down so these were nice and even. But with this pre-sanded plywood, the final layer is pretty thin, so it's very easy to rub through, which makes for a very ugly finish if you're staining it or doing anything like that. So instead of sanding that, pick up a flush trim bit. Should be in everyone's trimmer router arsenal. Very, very handy. And then after we use the flush trim, we'll be doing a rounded corner on the box. So uh, here we go. Finished up the routering, trimming, whatever you want to call them, eased edge. Everything's flushed up. No sanding yet, and it's freaking deadly. Deadly on there. I love this method of construction. Like I said, I never used to do it. This method of construction with the flush trim bit and rounding is what I really want to show you guys with this video. But anyways, back to it. Much more comfortable with that height as I did trim these down. Trim the center a quarter inch before I put it back together. Happy with that, happy with the way she fits. Next up, we gotta look at speaker terminals. Old school Steve Mead style with sync hardware. This time we're going metric. So I got ring terminals on the end of some speaker cable here. Um, oh, there goes a the washer. Anyways, this is M4, happens to be generally for bigger stuff. We need I have bigger hardware, bigger ring terminals, but for this, uh, this is what I choose. Uh, yeah, so these I believe are M4 by 25 mil with the affixed hardware, so it goes uh, bolt. So on the bolt, it's washer, ring terminal washer. Then they go inside the box, which I drilled two holes for already. Bolt, washer, ring terminal, washer, three quarter inch plywood, washer, nut, is what I'm doing right now. Not putting a lock washer or anything on here. You could use locking nuts, some kind if you were so inspired to. However, I'm just reaching it out with a pair of pliers and grabbing the head of the bolt, if it was easier. And hand tightening these onto the foot. Get on there. This is just more for looks than function. Bing. Bottom. Boom. Just like that. And yes, I purposely put it on an angle because I want to be different. And that's kind of the angle everyone will view it as looking into the truck. But my goodness, everyone be careful when you're doing that, screwing around the surround is the most precarious part. I definitely did that because I was showing off my drill skills a bit, but usually, honestly, I would cover it up with a finger and, you know, do it. But geez, these come with a lot of fasteners. This is four more fasteners than the P315s come with, and they weigh like three times as much per driver and take the same amount of power. I'm like, mm, my goodness, this is in there for good. All right.
All right, I guess I got one last tip, kind of put the finish on, did all that stuff, you know. Velcro. Velcro on the bottom, if you go with the not like fuzzy side, so the hard side of the Velcro, and you can just Velcro these things to the fuzzy carpets in your views. And it actually works pretty good. So like here's my Velcro. I just cut off, I don't need the fuzzy side, so just cut off the, uh, the hook side. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna throw her in right now. And uh, yeah. All right, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a couple weeks, I know what's up. Still gotta film the demo for this. Here's our demo track, classic from mine. Roses and Money, the Blau mashup. Well, well guys, that's the end of the video. If you have any other questions, I will do my best to answer them in the comment section. I'm pretty good at that. Um, thanks for watching and you guys have a good day.